Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India In this lecture, we will discuss about protein secondary structures. In the previous lectures, we discussed about the primary structure of protein and what are the various information we can obtain from the amino acid sequences. We discussed about various features or properties, right? we discussed about the uh, amino acid occurrence, composition, molecular weight, average properties hydrophobicity profiles right and how to construct profiles and then how to align the sequences right we discussed about the different uh, aligning methods right how to identify a sequence which is closely related to your own sequence right so and various other uh, parameters in the last class what did we discuss non yeah because if you want to analyze a large scale data if you have a large number of sequences for example, then if you include all the sequences it may introduce a bias. So, we discussed about the redundancy of the sequences and how to eliminate the redundancy from any data set right with an example of amino acid sequences right. So, how to construct non redundant data sets? What are different uh, software we discussed in the class? CD heat, blast cluster and Pisces. Right. What is the mechanism or what is the principle used in CD heat? K means clustering. clustering, right. They use a clustering technique, right, to obtain non redundant sequences. Also, they instead of doing the complete sequence alignment, they try to construct the short peptides of different lengths and see how many residual segments are present in different sequences, right. Based on that, they develop an algorithm to obtain non redundant sequences. So, what are the advantages of having CD heat? Large amount of you can handle large amount of data, so it is very fast, right? You can see it is a reliable uh, 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 resource. Then, when we have the disadvantages, so what are the disadvantages of CD heat? Not suitable for very low uh, identity. Yeah, it is not suitable for low identity. For example, if you want to have the sequences of 20 percent sequence identity, right, that is not uh, possible with CD heat because it uses up to 30 percent or 40 percent, right. Then, the blast cluster. You can get standalone version from the blast site, right? Here they can handle uh, different sequence uh, identities. Then we discuss about another server called Pisces, right? So here also you can uh, get the non-redundant data set, but here the limitation is it can handle only limited number of sequences. So we discuss several aspects and several information you can get from the amino acid sequences. And today we will discuss about protein secondary structures. Right. So, what do you mean by secondary structure? Because going from the primary structure to secondary structure, it is one level up. So, we have more information than we get from the primary, primary, primary structure, amino acid sequence. So, then defining for secondary structure, how can we define secondary structures? Periodic arrangement. It is a periodic arrangement, right? it is regular and the periodic arrangement of amino acid residues right, in a polypeptide chain. Right. So, mainly this arrangements are maintained by hydrogen bonds between some specific atoms. If you see the regular secondary structures, the hydrogen bonds formed between the amide hydrogen right NH and the carbon and oxygen right CO of the peptide backbone. So, if we discuss about any secondary structures, it is mainly formed by the residues which are in the main chain not the side chain. This is this is what uh, we uh, define the different secondary structures. So, based on the regular arrangement of these residues, there are different types of secondary structures. So, what are the commonly occurring secondary structures in proteins? So, alpha helices right because the first they identified the helices in proteins. So, Greek letter first letter of Greek is alpha. So, they mentioned alpha. So, they put alpha helices and the second one is the beta strands. Right, and some strands they join together to form sheets. So, you can see the turns or bends because if you have any second regular secondary structures helix or strand, 
if you want to change the direction so it has some some secondary structures which turns the direction right that is mainly turns or you can call it as bends and some structures which are irregular so in this case you can call uh, these structures as coil structures so you can have different secondary structures and the regular secondary structures are simplified to alpha helices and beta sheets along with turns and coils so how we get the helical structures what is the interactions which maintain the alpha helical structures right you can see it is a kind of spring and the shape of a helix right you can see it is a shape of the helix so this is why we get the name helix and the first letter of greek i greek is alpha so they call this as alpha helix how alpha helix are formed so if you see the arrangement of residues right and the arrangement of atoms so you can see this one residue it contains the atoms nh co and you can see r is r group what is r group it is side chain right how many side chains in a protein 20 side chains right so the r varies from 1 to 20 so that that depends then nh co this is the main chain right you can see this is the chain right it will go like this so you can see c alpha one side hydrogen one side this is r group c here you can see the double bond o here you can see the h so here you can see the carbon oxygen and we have the amine hydrogen here right so nh is here so between i and i plus fourth residues from the co and the nh groups you can make the bonds you can see from here this is a nh and this is a co right you can see a the hydrogen bonds this is hydrogen bond you can see hydrogen bond so if you make this hydrogen bonds between i and i plus 4 between the nh and co atoms then ultimately you can get a kind of spiral shape of structures this is gives the formation of alpha helix so alpha helix is mean formed by hydrogen bonds between the CH, co and nh atoms of i and i plus 4 residues right in the main chain so if you look at the alpha helices it is a kind of uh, a staircase just going from one to others means of a, some steps if you go from starting from here and go here and then this come this will have a one complete turn if you go from here to here one complete turn it contains 3.6 residues for example if you see this is 1 2 3 and 0.6 right so 3.6 residues per turn and if you look in this complete turn right you can see this is the 65.4 angstrom in one turn right now 3.6 residues per turn and 5.4 angstrom per turn then what is the rise per residue One point right you can see rise you can calculate 5.4 divided by 3.6 right this equal to 1.5 angstrom right so if you have uh, for 10 residues it will accommodate if it is straight then how, how much it will accommodate 15 angstrom this is the reason if you look into the transmembrane helices the transmembrane segments they have the 30 to 40 angstrom right if for example if you take 30 angstrom then how many amino acids uh, can be reside in between the transmembrane segment 20, 20. 20 residues right this is transmembrane segments are long to accommodate the width of this 30 to 40 angstrom right you can get 20 to 30 residues right because this is not straight it can have the different conformations so it can have accommodate more residues so approximately we get 25 to 26 residues inside the membrane so if you look into these helical regions the residues are closely packed for example if you see these uh, structures right they are very close they are dense so they are closely packed in alpha helical uh, structures and there are several alpha helical segments in proteins right ranging from different residues approximately what is average length of alpha helices in globular proteins it is around 10 to 10 to 12 residues right approximately in uh, known structures for the uh, length of this alpha helices in 3D structures. So, this another second, second one right first we discussed about alpha helix and the second is the beta strand because it is a kind of ladder type of structures right and they find out sec, uh, second one so the greek letters beta 
So, this put as the beta strand. So, there are two types of beta strands depending upon the direction of the chain. Here also you can see the beta strands which are formed between the NH and CO groups right. You can see the CO group and NH group. You can see the hydrogen bonding between uh, CO and NH to form the beta strand. So, here there are I give two different examples here this is the one which is here the chain goes to two different directions one chain is going right to left and the second one is from left to right. In this case we call this beta sheet as the anti parallel beta sheet and the second example if you see the chain runs both from left to right in the same direction. So, with the same direction then this is called parallel beta sheet. So, if we compare the alpha helices and beta sheets alpha helices are closely packed and the beta sheets are completely extended and this is loosely packed. They can form the hydrogen bonds together to form the beta sheets either parallel or anti parallel depending on the direction. So, now we discussed about the alpha helices and beta strands right. If you look into these structures other than the alpha helix there are some other helices are also present depending upon the hydrogen bonding pattern. In the case of alpha helices the hydrogen bond is in between i and i plus 4. Some cases you can see the hydrogen bond between i and i plus 3 right and some cases you can see i and i plus 5. If the hydrogen bond is between i and i plus 3 right then that is called right that is called 3 ton helix right. So, that is 3 that is used right. So, it is called a 3 ton helix and if it is i and i plus 5 that is called pi helix. So, you have 3 different types of helices and which one is commonly occurring in protein structures alpha, alpha helix alpha helix commonly occurring in, in the protein structures because it maintains the stability right other other one other, other if it is i and i plus 3 or i and i plus 5 it is either tightly packed or loosely packed in the case of alpha helices right it is properly it is arranged. So, in this case it can maintain the stability and hence alpha helices are commonly occurring in protein structures. So, now heard other regular structures right called one is the turns. So, one third of the all globular proteins right in all the residue among all the residues they contains turns because the turns will reverse the direction of the polypeptide chain. So, how turns are formed? So, what is the major interaction? This also hydrogen bond right between the carbonyl and oxygen right and the ammonia nitrogen between i and i plus 3. So, depending upon this the interactions right how they make the bonds there are three different types of turns for example, type 1, type 2 and type 3 and if you look into the frequency of occurrence of turns in protein structures right which one is most frequently occurring type 1 right I will tell you what is type 1 and type 2 and type 3 and type 1 turns which are occurring more frequently than the other types types 2 and 3. So, if you talk about the type 1 turns it is mainly depending upon the backbone dihedral angles right. So, you can see the residues are minus 60 minus 30 and minus 90 0 for the residues i plus 1 and i plus 2 in the case of type 1 turn. And we look into the frequency of occurrence of amino acid residues in the turns you can see the proline is the residue which presents quite often in the position i plus 1 in the type 1 turns because the phi angle is restricted to minus 60. So, I will discuss about the phi and psi angles right in a few minutes. Then in type 2 turns in this case the dihedral angles are minus 60 120 right and 80 0 for the case of i plus 1 and i plus 2 and here in this case the glycine is the favored residue for the case of type 2 turns. Here you can see the difference the, the atoms here they change the directions of oxygens. So, this is called type 2 and type 2 dash right. So, there is the negative and positive dihedrals. So, glycine is frequently occurring in type 2 turns. So, that is another turn called type 3 turns right it is not commonly occurring uh, turns, but here you can say backbone dihedral angles are minus 60 minus 30 and uh, minus 60 minus 30 for the case of i plus 1 and i plus 2 for the case of the class 3 turns. So, we discussed about different types of secondary structures one is alpha helix second beta strand and turn all the secondary structures are formed by hydrogen bonds between the residues NH and CO in the main chain. So, now you can have a main chain so write the formation of the main chain right so you can see this starts from n c alpha c n c alpha c. So, we see the rotations 
at the different planes you can see some places you can rotations are allowed and some cases rotation are not allowed. So, the formation of the dipeptides that we have peptide 1 and peptide 1 how they are formed the, the peptides by means of peptide bonds right. For example, if you have the uh, rest 1 and the rest 2 right you can by elimination of water molecule right you can form the peptide bond. Peptide bond is the partial double bond character. So, it is a strong bond for example, this is the peptide bond C n here the rotations are not possible. So, then if you look into these other bonds the rotations are allowed in other places right what are the other two places you can see n c alpha as well as c alpha c right for example, if you do this n c alpha c n c alpha c n c alpha c. So, here you can see c n this is the peptide bond. So, rotations are allowed right here this is the peptide bond here you can here carry the rotations and here also you can see the rotations. Then the rotations along n c alpha right and this is called the phi angle and the rotation along the c alpha c that is called psi angle right. If you write this phi and psi here right it is not a bond it is a rotation around that particular bond this is why they they put kind of rotation like this right phi and psi. Right. How to get this phi and how to get this psi? Phi means the rotation along n c alpha that means there are two planes right one form c n c alpha form one plane and n c alpha c forms another plane and the rotation between those two planes right they form the phi angles. So, how many atoms are required for the formation of this diagonal angles either phi or psi four, four atoms right. So, which is the bond length ok this will define bond length right how many atoms are required to define a bond length two, two. two atoms right then you can see angles for example, you can see angle here right in this case how many atoms are required to get an angle three three, three. three ratio. So, if you guys one two three you can see an angle but in the case of diagonal angle how many atoms are required four, four atoms are required first one two three form a plane and two three form another plane a diagonal angle is the angle between these two planes right here in this case we can see phi and psi angles. Now, the question is is it allowed for any angle phi can take the rotation of how many degrees 360 degrees from we take this start from 0 we can take the complete rotation you can take 360 degrees or if you take the clockwise and anti clockwise then plus 180 and minus 180. Likewise psi you can see 360 degrees you can rotate right. But if you rot rotate phi and psi angles is it allowed that all rotations it is not allowed why it is not allowed because it is surrounded with other atoms right if only this we have the only 4 atoms then you can rotate. But in this case you have the R groups and you have the hydrogen and you have other atoms in this case rotation is not allowed for all the rotations right it is restricted to some rotations. To understand the possibility of allowed rotations and the disallowed ones, J. N. Ramachandran, right, he is from India. He tried to construct models, right, by forming the small peptides for the for example, dipeptides, right. So, he tried to con consider each atoms right as hot spheres, right. It has the vibrating this uh, Van der Waals radii, they consider the Van der Waals radii, right, the small r and capital R based on these vibrations, right. And then he try to rotate and see which rotations these atoms can interact or atoms are not forming any steady clash. For example, if there is capital R, this outer radius, right, two atoms, this is R A, this R B, right. For example, if you have uh, two atoms, right. We so, this is a small radius R A. So, this is, a, uh, this is R A. So, you can see here this is the small one is R B right and the cap this is R B. If the distance is more than this R A plus R B they do not have any steric interactions. In this case the rotations are possible rotations are allowed. If it is less than R A plus R B and more than small R A plus R, small R B then it is possible, but not freely possible. In this case, they, they mentioned that it is partially allowed. Maybe less than the small r and small r b, this van der Waals radius, they, they clash. In this case, they, it is not possible. This is called a disallowed region. So, he tried all the combinations, right, and then see which angles are allowed for different secondary structures. 
for example, if you have alpha helices, right? How the alpha helices are formed? Just we discussed, right? I and I plus four, right? Between the uh, NH and CO, CO bonds, and they are like helical shape. In this case, the, the rotation is very restricted because if you rotate more, automatically it will make a steady clash. So in this case, they found that the phi angle of this is the range for phi angle, and this is the range for psi angle. And this is psi. This is phi. Right? You put the x-axis as, as phi, right? And the y-axis as psi. Right. And see, so this is the region where they can accommodate these residues, right? If it is an alpha helical conformation without any steady clashes. Here you can see the L1. L1 is called the partially allowed. Okay, this is the partially allowed regions. Right. And the white region, they are completely disallowed regions. So, compared to the alpha helices, you can see the beta sheets. So, you can see this is wide. Why it is wide? Because more flexible. More flexible is loosely packed, right? This is not it is not tightly packed. This is, is loosely packed, so it can have more options for the for the interaction. So you can see the more rotations right are allowed. In the case of beta sheet, this you can see it is mainly around the one minus one eighty regions and plus one eighty regions. So this is the phi, and you can see this is psi, right? You can see. Then Jane Ramachandran, right? So he got with these small models, and then he checked with these known structures, right? And then see. If we alpha helix structures we know, so you can calculate the phi angle and psi angle, and then we can verify whether the alpha uh, phi angle and psi angle are within the limit what he proposed in this allowed region. So in this case, okay, as we discussed, okay, these are the two uh, uh, bonds which are free to rotate. So these rotating angles they call phi and psi. So JNR use a combination models, right, and then based on that uh, collisions he determined the allowed regions and disallowed regions right, based on the sterically uh, static interactions. So, now how to calculate this phi angle and psi angle? For example, if you have protein 3D structures, I can give the coordinates. Okay, this is the x, y, z coordinate. If you know the x, y, z coordinate, you can calculate the distance, right? How to calculate the distance? You can distance and Hamilton we discussed discuss yesterday x1 minus x to the whole square plus y1 minus y to the whole square plus z1 minus z to the whole square, right. Angles you can calculate, right. You can take the vectors and you can take the uh, get the get the angles. Then how to get the torsional angles? If we have for example, if you have this the x, y, z coordinates and take four atoms, right. Here you can put the four atoms, the c, n, c alpha, c. I take the mentioned atoms. For the first one, we know that x1, y1, z1. And the second one, for example, you take this as x2, y2, z2, and this one x3, y3, z3. If you have three coordinates, three atoms, can you make a equation of a plane? Then you can form a plane, right? What is the equation of a plane? X1, x2, right? So you can get the equation, right? A1x plus B1y plus Z1z plus D1 equal to zero. So A1, B1, C1, and D1, you can you can calculate using the determinants. Here, one, one, one. Y y one y two y three z one z two z three j. Likewise, you can calculate b, c, and d, right? Because x y x y z all are known, right? Because all the numbers are known, right? If the coordinates are known, if you do this, then you can you can form this equation. Right? For plane one, then go for the plane two. What other three residues you need to consider, right? We take this one two three. Then you take this as one, this is two, and take this as three. Take these three coordinates. And you can use the same equation, right? And then you can calculate the equation of the plane. So that is equal to a two x plus b two y plus c two z plus d two equal to zero. Now you can calculate the diagonal angle using these two equations, right? Using this cos alpha equal to a one a two plus b one b two plus b two divided by square root of this. Now if you get this one, then you can get the alpha. There is cos inverse of the, the quantity that will give you the alpha, then you can get the diagonal angles. I show an example the same data we have. So, there is a server which can take this x, y, z coordinates and get the equation of the plane. For example, if you have x, y, z coordinates, right, this is the same coordinate uh, which I show here 9.176. Okay, this is the coordinate for the first one, right. Okay, give then this is the equation of the plane. Then for the surface 2, you can get the equation of the plane and finally, with these two equations, they calculate the diagonal angle. So, okay, this is about uh, 77 degrees. So, if you get the coordinates of four atoms, because four atoms are required for diagonal angle. So, three in one plane and the three in another plane. So, you can get the equation of the planes and then use these equations to get the diagonal angles, right? It is very simple.
Now, this is one example for example, myoglobin, myoglobin you know this is all alpha protein mainly alpha helices and they showed that 60 to 69 these residues form alpha helix. How to verify, how to check whether these residues really form alpha helix or not? So, get the phi psi angle, so we take the mentioned atoms, get the phi psi angles and then see whether these phi psi angles are in the allowed regions of the Ramachan plot. So, if you get this phi psi angles that should be within this region. With this region, then you can say that okay, these residues are belong to this alpha helix, right? We can do that. So now, if we have a 3D structures based on the hydrate bonding pattern, you can easily define secondary structures. Mm -hmm.